Welcome to the Bentley Systems Training Course to learn how to model lateral systems in the RAM Structural System Modeler. Over the next series of videos, you will learn how to model lateral systems, which includes modeling lateral elements, including steel braces, and also assigning certain properties to lateral members or elements. Before we begin modeling our lateral members, let's first discuss the difference between gravity members and lateral members. When generating a RAM structural system model, gravity members and lateral frame members must be differentiated. Gravity members are any members that support gravity loads only, such as dead load and live load. Lateral members also support gravity loads, but they can also support lateral loads, such as wind or seismic load. Now in RAM structural system, it is very important that when you're modeling your lateral frame members, that you provide a complete load path for those lateral members from the top of your structure all the way down. So if you see on this particular slide, we have provided lateral members indicated in red or purple, and lateral members are only supporting other lateral members. For example, a lateral beam member must be supported by a lateral column or another lateral beam. It cannot be supported by a gravity member. Lateral beams, columns, and walls will be modeled in the RAM modeler plan mode. When generating your structural model, you will need to designate which members are gravity and which members are lateral. This can be done by setting the framing option to either gravity or lateral when first laying out a particular beam, column, or wall, or you can use the Change Properties command to modify an existing member. In the next series of exercises, we are going to be using the Change Properties command to convert some members that were previously modeled as gravity to lateral members. For this particular training, we are going to be modeling some braced frames along grid lines C and G between grid lines 2 and 4, and we're also going to be modeling some moment frames along grid lines 1 and 5 between grid lines C and G. The first step to do this is we are going to convert some of our previously modeled gravity members to lateral members. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to select our appropriate material and layout. And since we do require a constant load path from top to bottom of our structure, we're going to start at our first floor layout, which is a concrete level. So we'll select our concrete material here. On this layout at the appropriate locations, we're going to need to change the properties for our concrete columns and walls. First, we'll start with our columns. In our layout toolbar, we'll select our layout column icon, and then we can see several new tools have appeared in order to lay out new columns or change the properties of some existing columns. If I go up to my layout column toolbar, I will see that I have an icon here to change the properties. I'll go ahead and click on this icon, and here I can change any of the concrete column properties that were previously specified, including the framing type. I'm going to be modifying standard base supported columns and I'm going to select the checkbox for framing to assign a new framing designation. And instead of gravity, I'm going to select lateral. I'm going to leave the rest of the parameters set to their what they were previously designed as, so I'm going to leave every other checkbox unselected. Now with my parameters set, I can just click on the fence button and draw a fence with my cursor around the columns I want to change. I'm going to go around grid line 1 between C and G. And you can see once I fence them, they're going to turn in red, indicating now that they are a lateral column. I'm going to do the same thing along grid line 5 and along grid lines C and G. I'm going to repeat this process for the walls on this plan. The first thing I need to do is select the layout wall icon and then I have the same tool to change my properties. Here for the wall I'm going to select the framing option 
and change that to lateral and again use my fence command. When I change these walls to lateral, you're going to notice that those are also turned in red to indicate that they are a lateral member now. And now I'm going to work my way up my building structure until I get to the roof level. I'm still going to stay on my concrete material, and this time I'm going to go to my second floor layout. Here I can see along grid lines 5, 1, G, and C, I need to change my properties. I'm going to start with my columns by clicking on my layout column icon and then I'm going to change my properties. Now you're going to notice when I go back to this dialog box it still has the last parameters that I entered the last time I used this command. So I'm going to keep everything set the same as it is now and again I'm going to fence around the columns affected. And I'm going to repeat this process for my walls and also my concrete beams. First my walls. And then my beams, which again would start by clicking on my layout beam icon. And I have the same tool available to change the properties. We will now go up to our third floor level, again using our layout pull down menu. And this level is a steel level, so I do need to change my material over to steel at this time. I'm going to start with my columns by selecting my layout column icon, and again my change properties tool, and I'm going to change the framing to lateral. Again, selecting the same column lines that I did on the levels below to ensure that I have a consistent load path for my lateral system. And the same thing for my beams. Finally, I'm going to work my way up to the roof level Again, keeping my material set to steel, and I'm going to change the properties for my columns and my beams. Now if you would like to preview the lateral force resisting system that you've modeled thus far in three dimensions, I'm going to go up to my toolbar in the RAM modeler and select my 3D view icon. From here I can see all of my lateral members including my beams, columns, and walls, and all of my columns and beams are indicated in either red or purple. Now to further clarify which member is assigned as gravity and which one is assigned as lateral, I can actually selectively turn off the gravity or lateral members. To do that, I can turn off each member type through this toolbar at the top of the screen, and everything over at the right hand side is for a gravity member. So here I can hide my gravity columns, my gravity beams, and also my gravity walls and then I can very clearly see that I've considered a consistent load path for my vertical lateral force resisting system. To exit the RAM 3D viewer, I'm going to go File, Exit from the main menu, which will bring me right back to the RAM modeler. Once all of the lateral beams, columns, and walls have been created for your RAM structural system, you can then go ahead and model some vertical braces if they're applicable to your particular structure. To model vertical braces and RAM structural system, you need to be in the RAM modeler, and we need to enter the elevation mode instead of the plan mode. 
My first step in modeling my steel vertical braces is to enter the RAM structural system elevation mode. To enter the elevation mode, I must first select the tool up in my top level of tools in the RAM modeler. And then I need to select a frame beam or frame wall in plan. I'm going to go ahead and click on the lateral member between grid lines 3 and 4 along grid line C. Now you notice in the elevation mode we can actually only see lateral members and the only type of member that we can model in this particular mode is a vertical brace. To model a vertical brace we must first select our appropriate material and I'm going to select steel and then I need to in my layout toolbar select my layout brace icon. This is going to turn all of my other tools available to model and assign properties to vertical braces. I have two tools that I can use to model vertical braces. The first one's a standard command which is used to model vertical braces according to one of the standard brace configurations. We also have the option to add special vertical braces where you can customize the geometry a little bit more. For this exercise we're going to be modeling some standard braces so I'm going to click on the first icon to model a standard brace. Once I select that icon, I can select my appropriate profile and I'm going to select a standard chevron brace and I need to enter the yield strength of steel. Now eventually I'm going to be assigning these as HSS rectangular sections so I'm going to enter an appropriate yield strength of 46 KSI. Then all I need to do is click on the fence button and then fence around the levels for which to model my standard braces. And here you can see that in each bay the RAM modeler has entered a standard chevron brace. Once you are done modeling your vertical braces you can return to the plan mode to then further edit your structure. To return to the plan mode I'm going to go back up to my toolbar and click on the plan mode icon which will bring me right back to the roof layout. Now for this particular model I'm also going to be laying out a brace frame along grid line G as well. So I'm going to return to my elevation icon and click on one of the lateral members along that line. Again I'm going to be setting up some standard chevron braces so I'm going to click on my layout brace icon and the standard brace tool. If I use a single button instead, I can just click within each bay to add a chevron brace. Once you have completed that step, we can again return to the plan mode. We can also see those vertical braces in the 3D view along with the rest of our lateral members. To go to the 3D viewer from the RAM modeler, we can select the 3D view icon and here we can see all of the members in the model. Now one thing that's important with any braces is that any time the brace intersects another lateral member, RAM structural system automatically considers that panel point as braced. We can see from our gravity members that are modeled in this particular model that we do have a gravity beam that comes in exactly at that vertex point. So we have satisfied all the appropriate assumptions. If not, you may want to consider either adding a beam here or checking this unbrace length a little more thoroughly when you get to your lateral design. Again, I can turn off all of my gravity members in my model to verify that I've achieved a constant load path from the top of the structure all the way down. Now, if I didn't achieve a constant load path, when performing a data check, that is the type of error that RAM Structural System will be able to help you detect as well. To return to the RAM Modeler, I'm going to go File Exit from the 3D Viewer. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.